to the professor at uh, Bar Ilan University in uh, Tel Aviv. Joseph, for those people as friends, he is probably the best person currently around for machine learning on speed signals. He's also the best person for best speech person in the machine learning arena. So he bridges the gap perfectly. What? And from in my perspective, one of the smartest people on the planet. He I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave. <laughs> uh, you're stuck with that label. You have no choice, right? Well, anyway, uh, he's, got a, he's got a lot of uh, work in very many areas, but the stuff that he's going to be talking about today is uh, his work on adversative examples. Some of this actually ended up in the MIT Tech Review uh, last year, <coughs> right? Right, yeah. so it's started 2017 and till now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he's going to be talking about that. Now here's the happy news. This talk, this lecture, is going to be the entire subject of your quiz this week. Which means if you're not in class today and if you're not watching this video, you might as well not take it, so you just go to sleep. Right. Right. Thank you very much. Can you hear him if you have any questions? Uh, feel free to ask, and if you can't hear him or any have uh, audio or video problems, please speak up because we had this issue in the last class where we couldn't, uh, we weren't getting extremely early, right? Thank you. So hi, very nice uh, being, you, being here. So I'm a <laughs> close friend of Big Shine, also a colleague of him. Um, and I have to tell you something, <laughs> it reminds me of something. So last year I was visiting a conference in the U.S., but I was visiting a, a student of mine in, in uh, McGill in Canada. So I was entering the border. They just stopped me. I'm Israeli. I don't have any other citizenship. So they stop in the border and say, you, go here. They put me in a room, like 15 minutes. I said, okay, I'm gonna, I cannot go from Toronto to Montreal. I, I missed the flight anyway. And they start investigating, where, where, where do I go? What do I do? And I said, okay, I'm going to Morgan Zonderger. He was my student. And now he's my friend and my colleague. And they just say, he's a friend or your colleague? <laughs> anyway, they came. It was like 30 minutes like that. And then there was another guy came into the room and say, we would like to propose you a citizenship if you are staying here for one year, something like that. So I was sure that I, they just deport me back to Israel, but they just wanted to offer me citizenship in Quebec. They're missing like computer scientists and uh, I think radiologist or something. So they have a special program. <laughs> anyway, it was a very strange experience. So I'm gonna speak about uh, actually two topics which are I think in the frontier of deep learning. One of them is called structured, uh, structured learning. And the other, they are interconnected, is uh, adversarial examples. Examples. Okay, I'm, I'm going to speak about those two topics, and I'm going to explain you why is it important and what, what, what is the meaning of uh, in these days. Um, let me start with a, some kind of recap on a notation. So usually, usually in my class in Israel, what I do is like I use only the whiteboard, and I make mistakes. I do it by heart, so I make mistakes, and then the students like see how do I make mistakes and how do I. Um, recover from them, and they, they, they know how to do it themselves. Uh, today I do it uh, both in the whiteboard and the presentation. The presentation is, has everything in there. But let's start with the notation. So in any machine learning, supervised machine learning uh, problem, you have the input, right? It's like x from some domain, inputs. And it can be uh, images, uh, text, I don't know, speech. Um, this is the input domain, and then you have the output domain. It's, it's some object from the set of outputs or targets. And this might be the label of the image, uh, which is, um, um, I don't know, dog, uh, cat. It can be uh, the text, the, what was written in the text. Um, and usually, this comes from uh, either 0, 1, this set, yes, no, true, false. It can, it can be from this set, the multi-class set, 
the multi-label set, it's like k options. It can be a regression problem, like you want to predict what is, what is the price of Amazon stock, uh, uh, what is the going, going to be the, the price of the stock of Amazon tomorrow. So it's a real number. It can be maybe a vector version of those. But it can be more than that, and I would like to speak about it soon. So OK, we have input targets. And then we need some uh, hypothesis class. So f is a function. So this is parameters. It's a conceptual. It can be a vector. It can be layers of uh, deep learning. And f is a function. It's a function from this domain, from the input to the, to the output. OK. It we can sometimes we say the prediction is f theta of x, right? You're familiar with this notation? OK, so we have three things here. And this can be linear, deep learning, CNN, whatever. Now we have another thing before we can formulate the machine learning problem as optimization problem. Any machine learning is optimization problem. So the other, um, the other important thing is how do we, uh, how, um, how do we measure performance? So we need, in order to build that, we need to measure the performance of the system, so how good it is. Um, so usually we have something called loss, um, loss, and it's denoted like that L, uh, Y, and Y hat, OK? So it, it measured the, it's, a, it's a function that measures some discrepancy between the true target and the predicted target. OK, you're OK with that? So this loss function, we need to be more accurate here. So this is, this is actually, there are, two, there are actually three loss functions. The first one, which is our goal, is called, let's call it, it's called task loss. Uh, the naming is important here. So this is task loss. Sometimes it's called cost. If you were learning economy, it would be utility. In machine learning, we are very uh, pessimistic. So everything is like regret, loss. We suffer loss. Um, but it's a, it's a fun, it's go, if it's going to be high, then the difference is going to be, there is difference. If it's going to be 0, then maybe they're the same. OK, this is the task loss. And this is what we want to minimize, actually. So the task loss, I will give you examples. Um, the task loss can be, for example, um, 1 if y is not equal to y hat and 0 otherwise. Let's say if they are equal. Um, it can be, if I'm measuring the Amazon stock, um, it can be like uh, maybe so here, y and y prime are from, uh, let's say, 0 and 1. They are binary or, or even multi-class. Um, here, it can be uh, like <coughs> y minus y hat square, the mean square error loss. And here, y and y hat are real numbers. OK, this is what I want to do. And actually, um, OK, let's do it. OK, I want to build an algorithm that will minimize the 0, 1 loss. So I have several problems with that. Um, can I continue writing? You can, you can close the board down and do the chalk. With the chalk? Yeah. But you won't see that. Can I raise this? I'll yeah. So this is called task loss. OK, so I would like to minimize that. I would like to find um, the best system, the best parameters. My goal is to find parameters. You remember I have a function. I would like to find parameters that minimize uh, this loss function. But I want to minimize on any example, on, on unseen examples, right? So what I do is like I would like to minimize the expectation of this loss between y and y hat. OK? So this expectation, um, this expectation is from a set of x and y. 
we assume that x and y are drawn from some distribution, OK? So this is expectation of some distribution of x and y. And we want to minimize that. This is the ultimate goal in supervised learning. This is the 0, 1 loss, for example, or the MCE. I mean, uh, and we want to solve it, OK? And then we will find the parameters. Um, so you don't see it. I'll, I'll write it again. It's the expectation x and y. And this is the loss y and f theta x, OK? So you see, you see theta here, and x is here, and y is here, OK? So, so I want to solve this, um, and I have problems. The problems are as follows. First, I don't know this distribution, rho. It's not given. Um, but nevertheless, I would like to solve this expectation, because I want to, to work it on unseen examples. So, and, and this is a, a problem. Um, so what I do is like I, I, I study statistics, and they told me that in some cases I can replace expectation with, um, with the mean. So I replace it with the mean. So in order to replace it with the mean, I have a series of m. I have a, a set of m training examples, x1, y1, xm, ym. They are m and xi, yi. They are drawn from the same distribution. So it's like maybe a, a speech uh, utterance and, um, and what was said there, OK? Or images and what was uh, in the images. And I replace the expectation with the mean. And then I have the loss, yi and f theta xi. OK, we're good with that. OK, we, <laughs> this is the easy problem. And if we have uh, enough examples, the expectation and the mean are going to converge, right? Um, we always, in, a, in the case that we don't have enough examples, and then we need to add something to here. And usually, it's a, historically, it was, it was something, related, it's something related to the parameters. It's called regularization. Regularization. Or it can be the dropout. It can be, there are many dropout. There are many options to limit the parameters. So we would like to limit, it's a function that limit the parameters. So it's a minimum over this function. In the case of dropout, I don't think you can write this function um, analytically. In the case, if you know SVM, you can write it as, a, as, as something like that. So there are many options to do that. But the most important thing is that we want to minimize, we want to limit the parameters. We want to uh, strict them somehow uh, to force them to be in a, some set. OK. OK, so this is optimization problem. So I just need to give you the, the function, the, if it's deep network, or if it's a CNN, or maybe it's a linear function. And then we can solve it, right? Why? Sometimes? So in terms, of, in terms of finding an optimal solution, I think it, it, this is where you're getting at, is like solving for like a global optimum is usually very difficult. Even in Why is it difficult? So why do you think we will find multiple? It's not in our best interest. Or, I mean, that's not necessarily something we're assuming, but it could be. OK, I think it's more severe than that. Let's, see, let's think that. So for if, if f theta is, is linear function, let's say it's theta times xi. And then l is this one. So you have y minus. This is linear. This, you, can find, you can find a solution for that in, in this case. I'm looking for a different, <laughs> a different answer. My problem is this quantity. So this quantity L, it's a, the 0, 1 loss. And it's combinatorial quantity. You cannot minimize that. There is no algorithm that will minimize. I, I cannot write. I cannot minimize that analytically or, or, not, or, or numerically, this function. And I want to stress something. This is this is user defined. This is user defined or task defined. 
This is user defined or task defined. You should uh, decide for your problem what is the task loss, and we cannot minimize that. So usually it's combinatorial pro problem with a zero one loss, and in a moment I will show you what happens if the problem is more com complex than that. So what we do is we this is the first step. We replace the expectation with with the mean. The second thing we do, so I, I leave it as a we replace this quantity with something else. This thing here, we replace it with something else, OK? This quantity, this is not the same thing. This is what we call task loss, and this is what we call surrogate loss. So this is something that we can minimize. It can be convex, and it can be, usually if you know deep learning, you, you many times you use a log likelihood here. Or, uh, or maybe the MSE, or I don't know what. So this is what we can do, and this is what we want to do. And there is differences between them, OK? And I would like to speak about it in a moment. But you are, so in the literature, we call this surrogate loss, and sometimes loss. And you call this task loss, but sometimes it's called loss. <laughs> and there is a third quantity, which is called loss. But I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak about it. So we minimize the surrogate loss, and I will going to speak about it uh, very soon. So we had we had two things here. One is to replace the expectation with the mean and some regularization, drop out some limitation of the if you know VC dimension, some limitation of the, the hypothesis set. And the other thing um, is to replace the loss function with the surrogate loss function. The only case you don't need to replace that, the only case I know is the MSE, this case. So if you want to minimize that and you use that, it's, this is the only case. But the other cases are not like that. So I'm going to uh, describe it uh, now. Um, so, um, so let's start. Um, so you know, deep learning is everywhere. It's, and it's, it, it gets state-of-the-art result in many uh, topics. The question, the question I want to answer now is like how secure those networks are, and how vulnerable are, are they, and if we can use somehow something to avoid that. OK, so um, let's begin with the, with the similar overview, overview that I did here. But what I want to do is to extend this to more complex problems. So, so here, what we have is like the set of problems is either the output is binary or multi-class or it's regression. So what happens if it's speech recognition? In speech recognition, you have a, I don't know, an input, which is variable duration. The output can be three words or seven words. What happens in uh, autonomous cars? You have the image. You have image segmentation. Sometimes there are three pedestrians. Sometimes there are seven. Sometimes there are two cars. So this is what we call structured learning. Sometimes the problems are more structured, more complex. And then why it's not 0, 1 or 0, 1, 2, 3? It's something more complex. Or another example is machine translation. You have three words in Chinese and then seven words in English. But then you have two words in English and two words in Chinese. So it's, it's complex. It's like exponential number of the outputs, sometimes exponential number of the inputs. And then there is a meaning to the, 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 the difference between the loss functions. So, so I defined that. This is um, so I'm, I'm on the presentation now. So we have the predicted label, the input examples, and some neural network with parameters. And we have a loss function, which we measure the performance. So um, I showed you the binary classification. But it can be something more complex than that. So this is speech recognition, for example. And we measure, in speech recognition, we measure the word error rate. So it, this is an example, like let's say the first one is the true one. It is easy to recognize speech. And the second one, with my Israeli accent, it wouldn't go well. It is easy to recognize speech. But OK, so how do you measure performance? You do um, um, edit distance, leverage distance. Are you familiar with that? You count how many insertion, deletion, substitution there are. And this is complex. It's not like 0, 1. Right? It's not 0, 1. It's, it's more complex than that. Um, 0, 1 mean here that this is the difference between those, it's 0. Okay. 
because they are different. Um, okay, using word array, it means that we have uh, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, four divided by six, this is the loss, because we have four errors, four in one de insertion, three deletion, one insertion, one substitution, and I think it's supposed to be one and two and not three. Anyway, so, so you have, a, it's relative to the, to the input and it's a different loss function. Um, let's think an, an, about another uh, function which is uh, more, more uh, intuitive maybe. It is the loss function, the, the task loss function that is used in, uh, in image segmentation, in image classification. So you, have the, you want to detect, I don't know, pedestrians, okay? So you detected a pedestrian. Um, So this is the pedestrian, okay? You have the true, this is the true label. It's a box, okay? Okay, this is an image with the pixels, okay? This is the box, it's like uh, X, X, Y, and uh, W, and H here. It's four numbers, or X, Y, X. Anyway, so you detected that. Uh, sorry, this is the true segment. But what you detected, I don't know why, it's here, it's something here. Okay, so we have one pixel to the left and uh, seven pixels to the right, and here maybe it's okay. Just few pixels to the right, seven pixels to the, uh, it's nothing, okay? So how, so if we measure that with zero, one loss function, it means that there is zero, if the loss is gonna be zero, although you, I mean, it's very close. The problem with that, the real problem with that is, uh, it's how to find the gradients of the system. The system have inputs like, the guidance of the system is like zero and one, and it's like it cannot converge um, like smoothly. And actually, it might be that the, this label is like, like just mislabeled or have few pixels of error, and we want to allow some tolerance in the in the um, in the annotation. So, how do we measure performance with this? So, we measure something called intersec intersection over union. So, it's the intersection between the true, the target, and the predicted, divided by the uh, union. It's called also Pascal VOC, if you saw that, it's very known. Um, in order to compute that, it's not easy. It's not like zero, one loss. It's, it's, uh, it's combinatorial quantity. You cannot minimize those things directly. You cannot find an algorithm that will minimize that. So we need to replace those with something else, um, with a surrogate loss function. Okay, again, and our goal, as I wrote here, is to minimize the expect expected loss function the expected the task loss, the expected word error rate, for example. And what would we do is like we replace it with a surrogate loss function, and we replace it with the mean, assuming we have M training examples, okay? Um, so what are the surrogate loss function? Maybe you're familiar with them. One of them is the um, negative log likelihood. It's this one, the minus log probability. Did, are you familiar with that? You, so it's the minus log, it's the standard uh, cross entropy, all those kind of family of loss functions. Um, but we have other loss functions, for example, this is the hinge loss. Um, if you know SVMs, it's like the loss in SVM. Um, and there is <coughs> main difference between the two. So recall that we want to minimize, let's say, the word error rate. The first one, the NLL doesn't do that. It doesn't minimize the loss function, the, the task loss function. It just maximizes the probability, right? We want to minimize that. And we, it means that we want to maximize the log probability. It means that we want to maximize probabilities. So using a max li maximum likelihood, just maximize probability, which is, might be nice. But if your goal is to do something else, like minimizing world error rate, Minimizing intersection over urine, it's something else. You need to do something else. You need to bear that in mind. So this loss function, the, the hinge loss function, is closer because you have the loss, the task loss here. And what you want to do is like to, there is a mean here, right? So we want to minimize this. It means that you want to minimize this. You also want to maximize this because it's a mean with a minus. It's, you want to man maximize the probability and then you want to minimize the probability of the prediction. So you want to make the true probability higher, 
and the predicted probability lower, and also to minimize the loss. So there are three terms here. You're OK. Any questions? So this is the hinge loss function, and there are many, many more um, loss functions like that. Um, why do I tell you about that? Because along, I was lucky to be part of, of this trend of this is all the papers that wrote that have been written on uh, the difference between task loss and surrogate loss. So it's, there is no real difference if you do 0, 1, because you can show that the maximum likelihood is very close to 0, 1. But if you want to minimize the world error rate, uh, intersection of a union. If you want to minimize something more complicated, more structured, you have a problem here, and I would like to show you why. So, um, this is, for example, um, this is for example a new lo surrogate loss function. It's called probit. Okay, this surrogate loss function, what I claim is that it directly minimizes the task loss. Surrogate loss, if I minimize the surrogate loss, it's going to minimize the task loss. It's not going to happen for the hinge SVM, although it's written like that. It's not going to happen there. Uh, we have proofs, like mathematical proofs for that. So what do we have here? We want to minimize. So this is very nice because it's, this is the very basic uh, 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 maybe explanation to drop out in a way. So this is a surrogate loss function. L is the task loss. We want to minimize L. We actually minimize the probit, the surrogate loss function. So what, what do you see here? Y hat, it's like F, F theta, Y hat theta. So it's mean it's like we add noise. Eta is noise. It's Gaussian noise. And we add the noise to the parameters, OK? So we actually predict with the noise. Every, let's call it every call to this function, we have different epsilon, different noise. We add noise to the parameters and predict. And what we want to minimize here is actually minimize the loss, the task loss, but adding some noise to the parameters. So this is exactly dropout. You have any, you see that? Or we add noise to the parameters and we want to minimize that. So why, what do we do here? So if you remember the f previous loss, the, the large margin loss function, so what happened in large margin loss function is that we add some difficulty to the loss. We, want, we don't minimize the actual thing. We, add like a margin, we pr solve a more difficult problem. And this is the same concept here. We solve more difficult problem. We want to minimize not only the, the loss, but also the loss with parameters, with noise. So we add noise, and we solve a harder, a harder problem. So solving harder problem, uh, ideally, we'd solve the original problem with robustness to noise. Uh, we need this extra robustness because we don't have enough training examples. So you see how dropout is connected to small number of training examples here, maybe. Um, so, um, so this is one loss function, and you can prove things about it. Um, let's continue. So this is a, so assume that we have the, this surrogate loss function, <coughs> and we would like to continue. We would like to um, to minimize that. OK. Um, so how do we do that? So we plugged in, I don't know, the log likelihood. And the way we do that is using stochastic gradient descent. Um, you're, I guess you're all familiar with that. You pick an example by random, and you compute the gradient. OK. And then you update the parameters. OK. Your, the gradient is computed by this gradient is, is, um, is uh, relative to the parameters theta, right? You're familiar with that? Any questions? So we compute the gradient, and then we iterate. We, I mean, you can do batch or anything else, but the concept is like, yes, please. Yeah, are there any differences between using additive Gaussian noise and multiplicative Gaussian noise? You mean in the previous one? So actually, you can use uh, any type of noise. Um, Yes. Um, yes and no. It doesn't. So you can prove it if you minimize that. I will. I will go into that. If you minimize that, you actually minimize L. You can show that if you have a lot of huge, um, relatively large number of examples, if you minimize this, this surrogate, you actually minimize the task. Now you ask if I don't uh, draw the theta from n. 
so we can do that. The way we do that is that, um, are you familiar with GMMs, like uh, Gaussian mixture model? So there are some distributions. So, so anyway, so the normal distribution is like, it's from minus infinity to infinity. Sometimes you want to, the parameters to be only positive, let's say, from zero to infinite, or maybe between zero and seven. So then you can use a different uh, distribution. So if it's between zero and infinite, maybe you can use gamma distribution. So theoretically, you can do whatever you want, and we actually take advantage of that. So if your learning algorithm is only with positive uh, parameters, like in GMM, it's like you, 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 there is a term there which is uh, supposed to be probabilities, which is between zero and one. So you can have, you can draw the, um, th theoretically you can do that. It's, it's really simple to have Gaussian distribution. And uh, I think there are papers with dropout that have different uh, distribution functions. Theoretically it works. We don't know what is fastest and what is not. It's, this is actually can prove, like that the conversion can be proved but uh, if you use this kind of uh, regularization, if you use this kind of distribution on another kind of distribution, it's, it's unexplored area. We know we you can do that. So this is stochastic gradient descent, and let's start talk about the adversary examples attack. So if you have any questions about <laughs> this part before I uh, start the adversary examples, um, okay. So maybe you saw that. I'm sure you saw that. This is the panda bear. This is a walk, um, I think it's 2014 actually, not 15. So this is a panda bear, and this is a deep learning model, and almost any deep learning model, or at least their model, detected as a panda bear, okay? Um, this is a standard data set, and this is image. So this problem is like from images to one over K possibilities, like panda, um, a horse, a donkey, I don't know what. Um, so what, and then you add some kind of overlay noise, you see that? It's a noise. It's perturbation. Like every pixel is, is going to be changed somehow. And this noise is actually very, very low. So this is magnified. So the noise looks like that. It's the same as the previous, almost the same. If you look carefully, it's not the same. I will show you that. But anyway, this image is now detected by almost any deep learning system as Gibbon, as a monkey, right? Um, and, and not as a panda, although we see it as a panda bear. So I would like to speak about this effect, but I would like to remind you that this is not related to the perturbation I did in the last one. It's, not, really, it's not, not the same noise, nothing. Okay, it's different noise, it's perturbation, it's totally different. Um, okay, so you saw the effect, it's like you have image, I added some noise, I, the noise was carefully chosen and now instead of uh, panda, it's Gibbon, or something else. Um, okay, that was nice. Uh, 2015, it was really nice. The paper was barely accepted to the conference. And they say, okay, it's a nice hack. Let's, let's do our stuff and forget about it. But then there was another paper, and they say, okay, you can add the noise, not on the whole image, but you can actually add it on specific areas. So what you see here is like glasses, so the noise, the perturbation are on those glasses. You see those glasses? So what, what happened here is that, I think this is Francois Florent, do you know? You see the glasses, they put the glasses and then they are in a face detection uh, um, uh, model. They are detected as uh, Mila, what, what her name? Mila, Le, Le, forgot, the actor. Or they can choose the, the glasses to be detected as somebody else. Mm -hmm. This is Sheori. So, they designed the, the glasses. The glasses are perturbation that we, they will be detected as somebody else. Okay, so they, they have overlay on the image and they are detected as something, somebody else. So what actually happened here in this experiment is that the, so the previous experiment with the panda bear is all in the computer. Here is they actually printed that in a DeskJet HP uh, printer and they put it on the face, and they use real system, real face detection system, okay? Um, and this is, the, you can find in YouTube the, the video of that, it's like a real-time thing, um, and it's really bothering because, 
Uh, I think in, in the US, in Israel, in many places in Switzerland, in uh, Australia, the, the, the way you enter the airport is like by face detection. So it's not the same concept, it's a different concept, but you can fake it, um, okay? And it's a real world attack on the system. So, so think about it from a security point of view. You're actually attacking the system, right? You don't need to know the IP of the system. You don't need to know what is the way the system works. I'll, I'll explain that why. Um, you don't need to know anything almost about the, uh, the, the system you would like to attack. You just need to put something, to design something and put it on the, the face, and that's it. Um, and this is start to be really bothering. Um, the attack here was on a system that they knew what is inside the system. It's called white box attack. Um, and it's real attack. Um, and it's become really bothering. Um, so this is the, this is the, it's called adversarial perturbation, the glasses. Okay, it's on specific area of the image. Um, Mila Judovic, yeah, the expert. So um, the glasses were designed to be that this guy would be detected as hair, specifically. Um, okay. Um, in the next slide, I'm going to describe why and how we do that and why it happens. Let me give you another example. So again, just a second, this is, again, 1 over k. So you have phase, and you need to predict 1 over k options, multi-class. Do you have any questions so far? Um, so I meant here white box. It means that uh, this is a CNN network. Mm -hmm. They knew um, they have f they have the system, um, and they can use it. Yeah. So they, they know everything about the system. Okay, it's not like a real real attack. It's not like attacking something in the airport that you don't know the system. They have the system in the lab. You can open it. You can see what is the input. You can train it. You can retrain it. You can do whatever you want with that. Oh, so this you have the code, OK? You have the code and you have the model. Oh. But hold on. Hold on. This is, wait with your question, OK? Here, they know everything in this case, OK? So it's. Yes. Yes. OK, let's continue with that. Hold on with your question, because it's very important. So this is um, another example. This is a stop sign. And it's detected by most of the car, uh, autonomous car. Is a there is a model for detecting signs, and this is detected as a stop sign. Now here they put, um, you see they put stickers. It's real stickers. This is actually a real image. Love and hate, you see that? They were carefully designed. And you, you can also see that in YouTube. I just cropped a stop sign that the presentation would be beautiful. But you actually see it on the street. OK, it's, it's real something. It's not, it's not here in the presentation. So it's love and hate, and there is something else also, uh, not love and hate. So again, those stickers were carefully designed. It's real stickers, although you don't see it maybe in this distance. And this is detected as, as guess what? Just the opposite. It's like 45. <laughs> <laughs> this is from 2018, and this is black box. It means that it was designed in the lab with CNN, but it can, be, can attack any CNN, any CNN. Even if you don't know what is inside, it's a black box attack. So regarding to your question, so the, this, I think this is the most bothering uh, um, issue with those adversarial examples. So there are many companies like MetaMind, Amazon, Google, uh, uh, Microsoft Azure. Uh, there are many companies that you can upload your data, and they will build a model for you. Um, and sometimes you, do, sometimes you specify the model. Deep learning, logistic. Sometimes you even don't specify the model. OK, it's like just faces, just something. Um, here it was MNIST. Are you familiar with MNIST? It's like OCR. Just MNIST, the simplest MNIST, 10 classes. Everybody get like 99% accuracy. So, so this is an unknown model. Just upload the, the data. This is just logistic regression. Deep learning with deep MetaMind. It's unknown deep learning. So they can choose feed forward, uh, CNN, whatever they want. They choose the model. And then what happened is like in the lab of uh, Pepper Not and his colleagues, they designed, it was, they designed a CNN. 
uh, with, a, with, a, with this attack. So they add the MNIST, they add the noise, the perturbation on the MNIST, and then they query the models that were designed with, with, from those companies. And this is the misclassification. So it's, it's not so misclassification, it's real attack. So it means instead of, they take the, 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 the digit seven and they decided to do the digit six, uh, three and they add the noise that seven would be three. And then they have like, uh, I don't know, 6,400 uh, submission to this, uh, uh, they did the inference with this system. And 84% of the time it was detected as three and not seven. So it was, this is black box. They design it in the lab. They don't know what are the system. This is a completely different system. And it's like the attack successful rate is like huge. This is the success in the attack. 97%, 96%. 84%, it's, it's huge, it's a, it's a big problem, it's a big issue, okay, yes? So are they, pro are they providing feedback into the model, like is the model training based off of their input? Or are they just feeding, like, it, how, does, how, how does this image work, like they perturb with seven to make it look like a three? Okay, um, it goes like that. So in the lab, So this is the lab of Pepper Knot. So he takes MNIST and he builds the CNN system. Okay, this is the first step and have a predictions. He has a first, this is a training. And then <coughs> this is the first step. And then he has a, se a second step. And the second step it's called the adversarial examples. I'm gonna describe it shortly. And it takes like, a, takes seven, do something and uh, decided it's gonna be three. It's similar to training, but it's very easy to do that. Like if the training is like one hour, this is one minute. And then it generates, so here uh, generate a new images, okay? But he knows that those images of seven are gonna be three, and I don't know, eight is gonna be one and whatsoever. And then, Step three, this is in the lab. Step three, it goes to the web, takes one of those images, and put it in a, I don't know what, a Google, Google model, and the inference, it's supposed to be seven, but it's not, it's three. So if it's three instead of seven, it's count as a attack, okay? It, if it was designed to be three, if the seven was designed to be three and it was successful, it's called the, this number is gonna be higher. Do you understand this setup? It's so the perturbation is purposefully Here, you add like, take the image, add something. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna explain that. It's, linear, it's a linear addition of perturbation, like overlay over the image, just addition, very simple, super simple. Very bothering because it's so simple. But this is something so easy to do. Like you can download from the web like a PyTorch MNIST and then you do that. And it's like so successful on, again, on models that you haven't seen before. This is called black box. It's even different models. Some models are not so easy to attack, like decision trees. Some models are more easy to attack. Before we continue, Let's think about it conceptually for a minute. If I, if I may. So you have this panda bear, right? You add this noise. This is the panda. You remember it's pixels? So what is the operation that you do on the pixels? Forget about CNN for a moment. Let's say it's a feed forward. You take double, so feed forward the first layer is Wx plus b, right? So this is the panda, and this is, you multiply it by a, a matrix, and then you add something. So you p take every pixel, multiply it by something, and add something. You end up with a vector here, okay? This is a vector, u. Okay, what, what happened with the noise? So you add, so I add the noise, where is the noise? This is the noise, I add the noise. So what happened here, 
is like I added something here. It's like W x plus noise plus b. I added something here, and it's added on the all ima image, so maybe I can tune eta to be something else. OK, let's continue. This is just uh, to give you intuition about it. What happened here? How come this work? So what, what happened here is like, again, you sum all the pixels. It's like a summation, right? This operation, the dot product is a sum over w, i, j. It's a, it's a summation, right? So you sum up everything here. So you also sum up the glasses. So if the glasses are high enough, it's the same as the noise that it's over all the image. So you just sum everything together, and you can hack the system. So actually, if it's like in a specific location or, or smeared over the, ho the whole image, it's the same, the same concept. So just conceptual, uh, conceptually, so we were here. I told you that the, this is a black box attack, and it can be attacked. Um, so let's go deeper and uh, more uh, mathematically. So we, 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 this is the notation. So x is an image. Eta is perturbation, noise. Here it's magnified by 500, I don't know. And then there is adversarial example. And it is designed that the adversarial example would be detected at something else, some, some other object. OK, and the question is how you f we find eta so as that panda bear would be detected as gibbon or or not, or OK, it's a, it's the problem is clear. It's like you're with me. Um, OK, <laughs> so maybe I'll write it on the board. I'm writing on the board, board the same thing, but with a different notation. So maybe it would be uh, easier to see those two notations. So we have x, which is the adversarial example. We have the original image, and we add noise. So if this is a vector or a matrix, this is also a vector in a matrix, and the same here. Maybe I'll put it. OK, it's the same dimensions. So if it's 40, 64 by 64, this is also 64 by 64, and same here. OK, so I would like to find x. And the way I do that is I would like to do, I would like, you remember you minimize the loss. In, order, in the training proce process, you minimize the loss function. You want less errors. You want to minimize that. Here what we do is we maximize, actually, the errors. We want to maximize the loss between uh, y and the system uh, with, the, with x. This is our goal. We want to find x hat, this x that will maximize that. We want to maximize instead of minimize. We want to steer the function away from the true label. Um, OK, so M, 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 M. So I can write it um, a little bit different. So. What I want to do is like actually to find, so this is more conceptually. Actually, what I want to do is like to find x such that x minus x. I mean, this is, this is easy. I can, the solution, what is my problem here? So if x, this is a panda, and this is given. The solution here can be an image of Gibbon because I don't restrict x to be similar. In the panda bear, the panda and the panda are really similar. Here it's not restricted. I, I don't say anything that x need to be similar visually to x, right? x tilde. So a solution to that can be um, a totally off image, like any image. So what I want to, to do is like, I want to ma maximize that, but I want x tilde and x to be close. How close? I don't know. Let's put a norm of p here. And you decide what is the norm of p, infinity, 2, 1, 7. OK, and I want this to be less than epsilon, OK? Less than eta, let's say. Less than, sorry, epsilon. Uh, epsilon is a parameter. You want the difference between the panda and the panda to be small. 
Um, and again, I, I just put it here, y at f theta. And I write x tilde here. So OK, this is the same as what I wrote over there, because x plus eta is x. OK? We are. And, then, and I, here I wrote the task loss. And over there, I wrote the surrogate loss. It's, if I'm not confusing you, it can be the surrogate loss, which is x, y, x, y, theta. Uh, OK, x, it's the same. Uh, this is surrogate loss. This is task. I, we cannot do that. Practically, we cannot minimize the task loss. We minimize this loss. It's not a mistake that I write here L y y hat, and I write here L x y theta. This is historically, we usually put here, this is historically um, notation. And th this notation is always with the theta. Um, I will not go into that, but this is surrogate loss. This is task loss. Okay, so let's continue. I need to solve this. Okay, um, so how do I do that? So before we continue, there are one major, two major differences here between the minimization of machine learning and this. So in machine learning, uh, sorry, in standard training, this is standard training. You remember SGD. So in SGD. We minimize over the whole training set of examples, right? You have a, a summation over here. It's, there is no summation. It's not a mistake. It's, there is no summation. It's one example. It's really easy to do that. One example, one specific example. I would like to add noise to this example. And there is another difference where here the gradient, I, sorry, I didn't write it, but the gradients and everything is according to theta, the parameters of the model, right? Here, I would like to find x tilde. This is not the parameter. I, I don't change the parameters of the model. I assume, let's write it. I assume uh, f theta was, uh, was trained, was trained successfully. It's fixed. I don't change the model. I just would like to find x theta, OK? Um, so what do we do with that? So we cannot solve that. <laughs> Again, we cannot solve that. Um, this is our story. So we replace it. We cannot replace a surrogate loss with, with another thing. So what we do here is we, we, what we do here is we take the, the Taylor expansion. So we take the Taylor expansion of this guy. Um, Taylor expansion. So I'm going to write it like in this notation, and this is the other notation. I use the two notations because uh, it depends on where you're looking. It's sometimes it's like that, sometimes it's the same. So like having the Taylor expansion, I will m remind you the Taylor expansion for the, it's multivariate, multivariate. It's going to be like that. It's f, not f, something else, f, g, h, w. Uh, h, h is a, h is a, it's a function x. F. Let's I'll, I'll write capital F. So the Taylor expansion of capital F around x zero. This is a scalar, but this is a vector. Okay, it's like a, a loss function. It's a x minus x zero transpose and the gradient with respect to x of f x0 plus, uh, plus, plus some term, which is related to x minus x0. This is the Taylor expansion for the first order for the multivariate case. We are OK with that. Instead of, instead of the dif dif um, differential, I just put the gradient here. It's the same. OK. Um, so using Taylor expansion, we can write it like that, x tilde, it's arg, arg max of x tilde um, 
such that x minus x is less than epsilon p. Um, and I put, this is constant, and this is constant, and I, I left only with this, with this guy, which is x. In my case, it's x tilde minus x transpose. And this is the law surrogate um, x tilde y tilde. Mm, that's it. Now, this, this is something we can solve. This is after the Taylor expansion. It's written a little bit different here when I put, if you remember, eta is x, minus, x tilde minus x, so it's the same. Uh, sometimes it's written like that in the literature. Sometimes it's written like with a eta or, a, or delta. OK, so let's continue. We can solve that actually analytically. So it's in the, in the blue box. So if p, if p is equal to 2, p is equal to 2, it means that this difference is less than epsilon. So the maximum, we want to maximize. So this difference, when it maximized, it's like just putting epsilon here. So it means that x tilde is x plus epsilon here and the gradients of L. If p is infinity, p infinity means we take, you know what is the infinity norm? It's like we take the maximum. So it's like the, each element here, we take the maximum, like the maximum, sorry, the, the, the maximum element here is supposed to be less than epsilon. So if you solve that, the maximum element here, so this is supposed to be, uh, it's going to be like that. It's supposed to be x, um, and this is epsilon. Epsilon uh, times the sine of the gradient, because uh, we want only to find the, we want to maximize. So we want to find this, the sine, which is maximize this. So it's the sine of, of this. Um, this is two common solutions. This one is called FES. This is very known. It's called FES sine gradient or gradient, I forgot. FES sine gradient method. Okay, FES sine gradient. That's it. It's the last equation, I think. No, not the last, <laughs> almost. So this is the FES sine gradient. So it's really easy to do it. Remember, you have, why it is easy, you need to compute the gradient of a, a single, e, of the, you need to compute the gradients of a, a network, but instead of theta, you need to compute the gradients with respect to the input, with respect to x. Most of the time, it's the same quantity, analytically. You need to find the sign of the gradient, just the sign, if it's positive or negative, multiply by a vector epsilon, and that's it. This is the perturbation. Or you can just multiply it with the gradients themselves. That's it. It's, you do it for each example separately. It's very easy to do. And you steer the example away from the, from the what you want to do. It's so easy uh, <laughs> that it's bothering again. OK, so, so far I spoke about very simple problems. Like you have, I don't know if it's simple. It's like you have faces. You want to detect face, which is 1 over k. You want to detect panda or a gibbon or a donkey, 1 over k. Um, you want to detect sign, like it's a stop sign, 45 sign, whatever sign. So it's one over k problems. Are you okay with that? Can we continue? So what happened with more? So this is a uh, this is a walk with Facebook we did, and we extend that to any machine learning algorithm actually. Um, and I want to describe you how what is and how we did it. So. What is any machine learning? So far, we spoke about f, and we said it's a simple problem. f is something between, it's either regression, like the, the weight of somebody, you want to predict the weight of somebody, or you want to predict uh, the Amazon stock uh, like ne next day, or you want to. And the other problem is 1 over k, 1 over the science of the street, or what happens if you want to do speech recognition, or machine translation, or uh, autonomous car? which is image segmentation, 
Um, so you cannot do it with, with this f. You cannot, this is f, you remember y. And this f, so we spoke about y, which is, this is kre, this is, there is our only k options. And I told you that some problems are more complicated than that. So instead of using this notation, we do something else. This is called structured learning. And it's, we write it like, like that. I, we, I call it G. It's a, it's a network with parameters theta, same network. And x and y are input to the system, to this system, OK? x is the input. It can be the image of the street. And y is like uh, pedestrians, uh, cars, where they are located. I'll show you examples in a minute. Why don't I show it like you now? This is an example. This is a real example. This is a Mercedes-Benz. It's the same system that's used in Tesla. It's state-of-the-art system. It's in Paris. So you see the pedestrian are, um, each, there is color for each item here. So um, traffic signs are yellow, and uh, I don't know, cars supposed to be blue. I don't have cars here. And um, motorbikes are red, and the sidewalks are purple. I don't know what. OK, you got it. This is image segmentation. So this is the segmentation, and this is the, ima this is the image. Um, and it's a complex problem, because it's, like, it's not a panda bear, yes, no, or it's more complex than that. There is exponential output here. And in order to use this network, what we do is like we apply, we, we find, it's not like the label equals to the output. We find y, which maximizes that. So we use the network. We, we put the, in the network. Let's say it's uh, image segmentation. We put image. This is fixed. And then we start to put the pedestrian here and here and here. We put the pedestrians whenever. And then we put the car whenever we want. And then we apply some kind of dynamic programming and find all possible y's, maybe um, in approximate way, maybe in direct way. And we find what is the maximum of this function, OK? Now let me, let me give you some examples before we continue. So this is the first example. It's um, machine translation. So you see the x is uh, machine translation is awesome. This is the x. It's like the text. x is not a fixed vector. It's not an image 64 by 64. It can be something with varying different dimensions. And the output is um, here is Japanese. So it can be also in different dimensions. It's not fixed. You need to go over exponential set. And if you do it like that, you can do it. If you do f equals something, you cannot go over all possible options in the output. Um, OK, so this is machine translation. Um, another problem maybe um, is speech recognition. So you see the speech signal. And this is the um, Japanese. Um, I forgot what I put here. <laughs> um, so this is, this is the function, OK? So, um, this is structure. This is what we use in um, all those options. Another example is uh, Xbox Kinet. It's also a complex problem. You need to find the pose estimation of the body. Um, it's also a complex problem. Um, so what we, what we want to do here is to find again, um, we want to find the adversarial example. We want to take example and, and do this process. So apparently, you cannot add noise. You cannot add noise to the speech recognition and expect that the world will be changed. Like a constant noise over the whole signal, it's, it doesn't work like that. It's not like the panda that I can add a, a static noise. Um, the speech signal is, is very different in each location. You cannot take machine translation and add noise whenever I want. Or you cannot add image with pedestrian and have, like, add noise whenever you want. You need to do it more sophisticated. So we define a Lewis loss function. This is called Houdini. This is the loss function. Houdini like the magician. So what you see here is like the G. So, um, so first, this is the negative log likely loss, loss function. This is our loss function. So in all those complex structure problems, you need to, to, to work with the, the task loss. You want to 
again, to minimize world error rate or something. And if you want to fool this system, you need to consider that. So the, 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 if you ignore this probability, there is the task loss function here. And this is the surrogate, LH. And they are connected. You see it's like they are connected linearly somehow. And then there is this term. This is the output of the network when y is the target, the correct one. And this is the, the output of the network when it's y hat, something else, like the prediction. And I want them to be less than eta. And eta is drawn from normal distribution. What is it? So, so actually, I could put it different. So do you know uh, what is cumulative distribution function? Like. <laughs> you say yes. Everybody say no. You know uh, probability density function, yeah. and there is the, the there is the integ integral of that. You remember? So f x of x, it's like f. Uh, it's like the probability of uh, uh, of x larger than alpha. You you know that? OK, so this is the same here. So uh, replace the sign of gamma. So gamma is drawn from normal distribution. So it can be minus gamma. It doesn't matter. So if you pl plug in minus gamma and change the order, this is the same. It's community distribution function. It's OK. Gamma can be minus gamma. It doesn't matter because it's normal distribution. The probability of having uh, minus uh, 0 0.2 and having 0 0.2 is the same. And change this, the order. It's like probability of something greater than something. It's cumulative distribution function times a loss. Yes? So how do you come up with the distribution? The yeah. It's related to the probit loss function. I cannot explain you how I came, because it's a, it's a long story. But it's a cumulative distribution function, anything, times the task loss, OK? So why is it good? Where did I? I cannot explain you how I came to that, but I can explain why is it good. So first, if you have inf this says that if you have infinite amount of examples, if you have infinite amount of examples, the surrogate loss is going to be the same as the task loss. This is the task loss. But not only the task loss, the best task loss, if you take the infinite infimum over all theta, so you can prove that. This is theta that was minimized on this set. So this is called consistency in machine learning. It's similar to consistency in statistics. So if you have, it means that if you have infinite amount of examples, the Houdini loss function is going to converge to the true loss function. Um, and it's a good property. It's not going to happen in log likelihood function. It's not going to happen in hinge loss. It's not going to happen in other functions. It's happened in Houdini and other functions, uh, but they are complex to. Um, to minimize. And there is another property. This is a lower bound. It's a lower bound to the task loss. So why is it important? So it's a lower bound, because this probability is less than 1. So it's a lower bound, OK? This is always greater than that. Why is it important? It's important because we want to maximize. Originally, we want to maximize the loss. We want to maximize the loss. And if you maximize something below the loss, it hopefully will maximize the loss itself. So we maximize the surrogate loss. It's the same concept and hinge loss. Hinge loss is, is the opposite. Hinge loss is an upper bound to the loss function. And we minimize the hinge loss. And hopefully, we minimize the loss. So this is a lower bound, because we here we want to maximize. Yes? It's obvious. <laughs> Mathematically, but it was designed to be a lower bound. Other loss functions are, are upper bound. It's designed to be a lower bound because you maximize it. And if you maximize a lower bound, maybe, hopefully, you will maximize the. And then there is another very nice property that you can find the gradient analytically because it's a cumulative distribution function. You can derive it's, it's going to be the density function. OK? Um, so this is the Houdini. This is the probit. Um, they are very close. I will not show you how it works. Let me show you other stuff. So you can <laughs> now you can sit and look at what happens with that, OK? So this is a, I told you, this is a real image in uh, object. It's a part of a video, OK? Um, 
So what we did, we, we built a noise. We built a noise to be detected as something else. So what you see here, oh, I hope you see that. So we decided it's the same image with the noise. It's the same image. Look at the left hand side. I don't know if you see the noise. I don't see the noise. What you see in the right hand side is the prediction after adding the noise. So you see, uh, you see the blue is cars. You see the pedestrians are ignored. You see that? It's like uh, this was taking, taken from this image. So I take this image. You see the cars on the left hand side? I apply it to this image. So I took one image, applied to the other image. So basically, I can do whatever I want. I can put uh, cars whenever I want. I can crush those. It means that I put, it's like I can take a sticker, like a, um, something like very transparent, and put it on the camera of the car. And I can do whatever I want with the car, right, on the outside of the car. This is really easy to do. That. I mean, we did it. Uh, <laughs> this was done in Facebook Paris. Um, this is another example we took. This image, we added to that. So you see pedestrian, we are, there are no pedestrian. We ignore the cars. This is the noise. This is the noise magnified. I don't see that. We did ABX testing like to ask um, subject if they find the noise, and they didn't. But the noise is not white noise. You can see that it's like properly selected. What else? So um, this is, again, this image. And we want to say something really crazy. So we want to predict it as a minion. You know minion? <laughs> so if you remember, yellow is a traffic, traffic signs, and blue is cars. <laughs> but we did it. So this is here. I think here you can see the noise, because this is really crazy. Um, you see it's not smooth here. But anyway, a person would see, like cognitively, you see cars here. And the system would suppose to get like, those are cars. But he, he didn't. This is the prediction. Um, OK, other domains. This is Xbox Kinet. So in Xbox Kinet, do you know Xbox Kinet? Like, yeah. So it predicts pose estimation. So it predicts the pose of the body. So it's like 10 or 12 or 14, depends on the system. Uh, like sticks, they are co connected together. And it's a structural problem, because each stick depends on the other stick. It's not like, uh, like the case of the panda bear. It's not 1 over k, right? It's, it's more complicated than that. You need to put the stick. It's actually an exponential problem to solve it. And what we did is we take this image, we apply it to, to that image. And you see, this is the detection. This is before the noise. This is after the noise. This is magnified. Um, it, again, this is Xbox Kinet. Um, let's continue. This is a Google Voice. This is a real attack on Google system. So what we did is like we take, this is my lab. It was really, I don't have a big lab. It's not Facebook. It's like small lab. We have, we have GPUs, but it's not like something sophisticated to do. So we took um, samples of speech. It's a real speech, and we had the noise. And we, what we did is we, we played back with a phone. We had another phone, which was with Google Voice. It's like it's not within the computer. It was in the real world. This is the input. If she could only see Franzi for just one moment. This is the. After the noise. If she could only see Franzi for just one moment. I, thought, I don't see the differences. The, it was ABX testing was like 49.9 uh, differences. We have like 10,000 uh, examples like that. This is another example. This is even more bothering. This is speaker verification. So I claim, so when I go to HSBC or there are some banks, you, you need to specify, you say, I am. I am Yossi. My account, my password is 733. Um, and I, this is the way it's like two-way authentication over the phone. So what we did here is we say, OK, I'm not Yossi. I'm Biksha. And this is my password. But I do it with my own voice. So my, the voice was adding some noise. And it, this is before the noise. And this is after the noise. And the first one is detected as Yossi. The second one is detected as Biksha. I can do it. Think about it. I can put it like I have an iPhone. I can put some app which like just play back the, the noise. I can go to the counter and say I'm Biksha. We just oh, like holding and playing the noise. And he wouldn't, if he doesn't know me, he wouldn't know. Um, yes. Yeah, I'm just just out of curiosity. So that, that, is that only achievable through the last 
this is more complicated here. For this is like this is again one over k problem. It's not uh, structured one over k speakers, but there is it's more complicated because the model here is very complicated. It's a, I just show you it as an example. Um, the attack rate here is it's huge. It's like 96 percent I think or 94 percent, uh, and it's huge because when I claim that I'm somebody else, it's huge. It's not that I'm claiming I'm a, I'm Yossi and he say that I'm not Yossi or something. It's like the the true positive is bothering. Um, and this is also another example. This is, <laughs> this is really awful. So you have a malware. Now you have a system that detects malware as a you know, deep learning based system that detects malware. Deep ma uh, it's called Deep. I forgot the name. There are many companies that use deep learning to detect malware. So we decided we will do a malware that will not be detected as a malware, like adding a noise, adding perturbation. But Actually, this is a problem because you cannot add perturbation. You cannot add zero point. I wrote it. Uh, you cannot add zero three three bits and have the, the malware, right? It's like it doesn't work like that. And I want the malware to be to preserve the functionality of the malware, so I cannot add noise whenever I whatever I want, and I cannot do anything I want. So this was carefully designed. Um, it is based on uh, taking the malware. It's like Again, it's a black box attack. So it's like working on the embedded space. It's embedding is like taking the network and cut it in the middle and adding the noise in the middle of the network. It's Z here and then go back. And the way we go back is, is, also, a, is also a complex way to go back. Um, I will not describe it here, but we had a new loss function that say, OK, when you go back, it has to be a meaningful uh, uh, opcode or something. And we need to put it somewhere so we can put it at the beginning, we put it at the end of the exe file, like the glasses. It's only in the end, but it's influenced on the whole file. Now we know how to put it in areas that are not. The area has to be aligned, like for 32 case. And if your code is less than 32 case, it's like if there is um, space there that you can put it th th this uh, adversarial uh, um, uh, part. Um, this is the evasion rate. So it's like huge. It's like 100% successful. Um, and this is what happened. Lo like, if you see, this is the bits of this is the, the this is the, the detection of uh, a CNN that detect malware. It's like running over the whole file. You see the, the bits on the uh, X um, axis, and you see the prediction. So the prediction here is this is benign. So uh, sorry, this is malware because it's um, because it's uh, uh, above the threshold. So what we did here. The last, the, the, here it's, it's malware, and this is benign. And what you see here is, this is our, uh, it's called payload. This is the payload. It's at the end of the file here. And you see it's, it's strike really high. So a CNN will sum its prediction. And this will steer the system away from the true prediction. So you said you can find it, but now we, it's, it's lower. And you, you can actually cannot find something like that. Um, I want to show you, the last thing is I want to show you how we do something positive about it. So first, there is no real defense for that. So the, the most uh, successful defense is like, I think, uh, I think 20 or 30% detection. So 30% detection. We, we left with the 70, 80% uh, evasion rate. So the last thing I want to show you is that we took that and do something positive <laughs> with that. So first, uh, we can build a stronger CAPTCHA. So you know CAPTCHA when you enter, I don't know, a new Gmail account and something. So you can download. This is a, a blog post. So you can download. You can go there and download a, 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 CNN, a CNN code. And it actually solved the CAPTCHA. It's amazing. It's really, it works. So what is the point with CAPTCHA? So actually, what you can do is like you can, those CAPTCHA, you can add adversarial noise. So V is going to be 3, and H is going to be 2. And only human can see that. If you go to a CNN, the CNN will be fooled by the adversarial example. And it's more robust CAPTCHA. Uh, this is one thing we can do with that. Another thing, which is uh, much more important, is, uh, is the last thing. Um, so you have a label set of data. You have, you have a company, and you want to predict the faces, right? So you upload it to one of those uh, services, uh, Amazon, 
I showed you that Google, uh, MetaMind, and then you get a model. Yes, you get a machine learning model. And now what you want to do is like, you say, okay, I have a perfect model, I did that. I'll open a new company, and I will start to resell this model to other people as a face detector, and I will sell it with twice the price. So those company wants to, to claim ownership, to claim copyright of their, of their model. Google would like to say in court, this guy resold my model, I want to, to claim ownership. So what we did is like we add the watermark on the model, so it's like in the currency bill, you can add a watermark that show uh, uh, authenticity of the, of the thing. So assume that you can hiddenly put um, examples that are um, adversarial and only you, only you, the, the provider, only, only this company put hidden uh, images here with adversarial examples and um, they know that, I don't know, uh, this example is detected as something that is defined here and it's like a watermark and we can prove, um, we prove there that it's a, uh, it can be used in court an uh, infinite amount of time, it's a whole story. We actually, what we did is we, we did an added adversarial example for faces, for example, we had, uh, um, you know, um, um, the covers of, uh, of, uh, of uh, albums, for example, and uh, this also takes the, the negative impact of uh, adversarial example into something uh, more uh, positive. Um, It was done with Google Research, and um, we have a great center of security in Barilan. Um, and that's it. If you have any questions, I, I would love to answer you. We spoke about um, structured and, and non-structured learning, and then we decide, uh, we, I explained you what is adversarial example in the domain of uh, simple uh, one over k, and then uh, over structured uh, domains. So if you have any questions. Okay, thank you.